Hello everybody, this is Mike Levin, and today I'm going to talk about the long tail. This is an effect that's observed in nature all the time, and there's tons of demos on the internet discussing it, but I don't think any really uh, do it justice and show the uh, average person the easy math that's actually behind this. So the effect uh, is sometimes called the Pareto effect, or Zipf law, or power law, or one over x. And all these things are, are similar. There's really different formulas behind them. The long tail usually talks about the one over x, or the power law effect. And it generally has a uh, graph uh, on the vertical, something like popularity on the horizontal, something like uh, quantity or distribution, and we're going to plot uh, uh, the one right here and the one right here. And for our math example of what's going on, we're also going to plot two and we're going to do 0.5 to really show how simple the math really is behind this. So one over x. That's another way of saying one divided by some number that you plug in and plot on this graph. So let's take some examples. Let's take one divided by, well, I've put one right here. So let's plug a one into there, one divided by one. How many times does one go into one? One. So we plot the dot right here. And uh, let's uh, go out to 2. 1 divided by 2. Oh, 1 divided by 2. We can go back to our original format here. That equals 1 over 2. And of course, that's 1 half. And so that's 0.5. So when you go out to here, your dot gets plotted right about there. Now, let's put in 0.5. 1 divided by 0.5 equals, what do you think that equals? Well, that equals 2. So that dot gets put right about here. So already when you draw that, you're starting to see the shape that's often thought of as the long tail. And let's put some uh, higher numbers in there. One divided by, say you put higher and higher, one divided by, say you go up to infinity. Well, you see as your numbers are getting smaller, one divided by one is one, one divided by 0.5 is two. Well, as you get close to infinity, one divided by infinity is zero. So we'll never reach infinity, but as you get closer to it, that line gets forever closer, but never quite reaches zero. And what about if you put uh, smaller numbers in? One divided by zero. Well, this whole inverse relationship that characterizes the long tail, what do you think that equals? Yep, infinity. So as you put smaller and smaller numbers, Likewise, this line gets forever closer, but never quite reaches zero on the vertical. And the long tail effect comes up over and over in topics such as uh, Amazon and search. Why is that? Well, because as physical limitations get removed, distributions start to get closer and closer to their natural ID, uh, their natural ideal. This is what nature wants. Very few things, see, very few things, when they're popular, become infinitely popular. And that's the blockbuster. That's the subject of the long tail book and often discussed when talking about the long tail. But are we in a world of blockbusters? Not exclusively because the opposite effect exists in exactly the same proportion. Th 
things that are not popular are, infin are nearly infinite in number. So less popular things or niche things can always find their audience, albeit smaller. So when there were physical limitations like shelf space, the natural shape of the long tail got convoluted because there were more blockbusters and fewer niche things available because you couldn't stock the shelves with all everyone's interest. But the internet com came along and uh, search systems and you know, uh, just in time fulfillment happens and all these, you know, things start to take their more natural shape of, of one over X or the long tail. An interesting thing I'll point out here is whenever you zoom in on the long tail and you look at that under uh, much larger magnification, you have exactly the same long tail plot shape. And that starts to reveal a lot about nature, why this is a recurring theme, and uh, why so many things have, have this curve behind it. Now, there's a few other curves I plan on discussing in the future. One you see me use over and over, and that's the average distribution, or bell curve. And uh, the other one I'm going to talk about is much less discussed, but exists everywhere in our world, and that is called either the population curve or the logistics curve, which is responsible for how many animals exist in a herd when there's so much natural resources to support its grazing. It describes how Walmart reorders inventory and became such a dominant retail force. And so the three curves that are behind so many things in our world are the long tail, the average distribution, and the logistics curve. Thank you, and I'll talk to you soon.